I know some of you got got a head start on our kangaroo. <laughs> and uh, no, which which I think is great. I mean, I was I was almost going to suggest that because um, you know we haven't done this before, and uh, I think just a little bit of um, exploring might be might be a good idea. Um, but if you haven't, of course, that no problem um, whatsoever. So um, there's a few reasons I chose uh, to do this subject today. I want to give you an kind of an introduction to portraiture in general. And uh, I thought an animal would be a great place to start. Of course, there's lots of differences. Um, with portraiture, you want to keep in mind the more familiar the subject is, it's actually harder to draw um, because we know it so well and we know we can easily recognize that something is, is a little bit off. So technically it's not harder. It, we are, we're just a lot more uh, scrutinous of, of what we're doing and, and how it looks. So if you draw a portrait of someone uh, that you've never seen just from a photo, you think, oh, that kind of looks like it. But when you try to draw a portrait of somebody you know, you become a lot more critical because you kind of know exactly how they look. Uh, so with animals, I also thought that doing an animal that is not that familiar, like a cat or a dog or somebody's animal, uh, I thought it would be a lot less intimidating. Um, I think also the kangaroo has kind of a, a very specific face, a very specific shape in the ear. So we do have some key elements that will immediately give us some resemblance. And we always, I mean, even though I say, you know, don't focus on the resemblance, but I think all of us, you know, want to have that pride, like, wow, okay, it does look like it. Uh, so there's a few things we're going to go over, and that's going to be how to do fur. And all those techniques, they go for hair, fur, anything that is that kind of mass. Uh, there's a lot of shortcuts that you can do, but realize if you are going to uh, do a realistic fur or hair interpretation, it is going to take time and uh, work and just, you know, being patient with it and building it layer by layer. So I thought that the kangaroo's fur was more manageable because it's kind of in clusters and we don't see a lot of individual hairs. Um, also, I just, I love the eyes. I'm going to show you how to bring out eyes and there's some techniques that you can use to really draw any eyes and kind of make them alive and uh, uh, they will be very, very impressive <laughs> when you show people. People are very impressed with eyes for some reason when uh, they're drawn. It's like, oh, oh, look at the eyes, look at the sparkle, when actually there's some really uh, easy little things that, that you can do to achieve that. Uh, so when you're drawing, uh, anything that is portraiture, make sure that you do have a very well sharpened tip uh, or several because you will need some fine points to create detail. Also, uh, when you're doing a portrait because you do have some highly contrasted areas, you wanna make sure that the tool you're using can actually go very dark. So I think using something like a black pencil would be a great idea or if you are using a graphite or just a regular pencil, make sure that you have like a black colored pencil or something just to put in those key dark, dark areas that will anchor everything in. And Noel, I have a question. Yes. <laughs> the image that I have is about two by two square and I can't make it any bigger. And it's okay. to see it all. Is there another way to get to it? It, well, there should be. What, what you can do is when Justin sends out the image, you want to save it on your photos. Okay. And then from, from there, you, you can see it better or you can, you can enlarge it. So You know what else you can do is uh, from the email, this is what I do. I just copy the image out of my email and then I open up like a document and paste it in there and then you can um, enlarge it from there. Yeah, there's lots of ways, but you want to take it out of the email. That's your best bet. Okay, and, so what do you uh, suggest? Because I'll do it right now. I just can't see it enough. Okay. What I yeah, did just, is you, you download it, you uh, uh, go to print, and instead of print, you go to download. Okay. And you download it, and then 
and then you print it from there and it comes out really great. See, I have a great yeah. picture of it. Oh wow. oh, wow, that's that's amazing. Wait, I, all I can do, and I hate this. Oh, I know, maybe I can add it to photos. That's the only thing I can figure. Yeah. So, so listen, just as long as you save it, you will be able to control it. I usually just send it in a text message to, to my phone. And then so I, while I'm working and showing you details, I can actually enlarge it. So I'm, I'm really working like from a small image, but all the images that I am sending you are high quality. They should download well, whether you save them or like Sharon said, you know, download them and then, uh, you know, enlarge it, print it out. They, they are good quality photos. So it okay, just well, as long as you take it out of the email, it, it should, it should work. Okay. Well, it, uh, you don't, all you gotta do is click. Um, all you do is click on the attachment when it's, mm -hmm. but um, if you give her my email, I'll go through it with her step by step after this program. Right. Okay. I got it. Thank you. I mean, I, it's okay. Here, All I'll, right. put, I'll put my email. Okay. okay. Email. All right. Why don't we go ahead and get started so we don't run out of time? Um, I'm going to go ahead and mute everyone. Noel, just give me a second, okay? Okay. We can go to the easel. Noel, can you hear or can you say something? Okay. There we go. All right. Should be good to go. Okay. So, um, so, so what I did is I uh, started on one beforehand to kind of go through the steps and kind of see what uh, to see what we might uh, c come across. Uh, on this one, I used. Um, uh, uh, two, two color uh, pencils. I used a brown and I used uh, a black, these, these two. And uh, I really kind of liked how in some areas the black and uh, the brown mix together. Uh, but you can use either one and you can also use pencil. So it's, it's completely up to you. Uh, I just thought that adding some of the browns really kind of went with, with the fur. So this is not finished. I just wanted to give you an idea of how it would look when interpreted from uh, a photo. Um, I want us to focus on things like angles, negative space. The best way to figure out how things, how far apart they are is to measure the spaces between them instead of having to just guess them. And uh, the other thing I want us to do today is as soon as we put in a feature, we want to, if it's two of them, like eyes or ears, you want to continuously go back and forth between the two to make sure that they're synchronized. You wanna step back at one point and just take a look at it from a further perspective to make sure that you don't have anything that's skewed because that can happen very easily with portraits. If it happens with something like, you know, a plant or, or an object, we don't notice it as much, but it becomes very noticeable in a, um, in something like a portrait. Um, the other thing is with animals, this area can be very tricky, how much of the snout you see, and it depends on the uh, position of the head. So if you are, to do animals on your own, just always be mindful of this area because that can completely change the look of the animal. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the basic shape. Uh, you wanna keep in mind that you do wanna leave enough room for the ears to breathe. And if you are gonna take the ear, you can see that it's almost as long as the face. So you wanna leave that much space. So I would kind of start the face kind of more towards the center of the page, and then you will have room for the, the ears. I would give ears more priority than the body. I think it's just more interesting and just is closer to a classic portrait. Okay, so I'm going to use my black pencil, and I am going to start with um, just the shape. So we can see the shape of the face, is almost like an almost like an egg shape
and then you've got more of kind of a triangle at the bottom. So that would be a great place to start. Again, when you're first starting, you know, just start loose and light because you might have to change it. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the body and we can see that it's the next kind of starts higher up. It almost starts where the snout, where the nose is. It starts over here and it just goes out a little bit and it goes just a little bit further than the line, the widest line in the face. So just a little bit. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place the ears. Again, I want to do it lightly because this might change. It might get bigger or smaller or narrower depending on uh, the proportions that we end up having. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in that space. See, that's, that's kind of the space that I have between the two ears. There's a, just a slight dip. And again, I'm watching the space that's in between them. And they go definitely past the line of the body. Okay. Okay, so right now he looks like one of the Winnie the Pooh characters, but <laughs> not for long. Okay, um, so what I like to do when I'm doing animals is I, I don't place the eyes first. I actually place the, the snout area. So what I'm going to do is I am going to kind of look at that shape. that's kind of where the bridge is and then it tapers out a little bit and that's where you will have the snout and the nose the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to place the eyes so i'm trying to assess from the top of the head where they would be and they kind of would be somewhere in this area so what I'm doing is I'm just doing a very light placement of them. I'm going to move across. And see, I dragged my pencil when I did that because that just kind of is helping me measure. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place the shadows that I'm seeing in um, the kangaroo and uh, that's gonna help us form shape. So what I want you to do when you're putting in the shadows is make sure that you also check the shape that you're putting the shadow in, okay? So every time you revisit an area, whether you're doing detail, whether you know, you're just doing shading, fur, erasing, you know, anything that you might be doing, just make sure that you constantly check it, okay? So I'm going to start with the top of the head. So I can see that this area looks a little bit long to me. So I'm gonna start with the top over here. So for the shading, you know, I'm just gonna do kind of a soft circular shade. Okay, I'm going to put the shadows in the eyes. So I'm just doing the soft shadow that's over here. Soft over here. Okay. 
Okay, so for the, for the nose, I'm going to put in the shape. I'm just going to give it a soft fill. Okay, so I'm going to move up. There's a strong spot here where the hair is a little bit darker. So again, from that, I'm going to move. So this is shaping the outside of the ear. And I can see that this area is too long. So I am going to fix that. Um, I can see you, uh, Noel. Um, Noel. Melissa? I can hear. Yeah. Do you see everyone else? Yeah, I can see the other students, not you. Me too. Did you switch the view? Are you on speaker view? I'm on my iPhone. There should be a place I Yeah, Melissa, for some reason, Andre's always um, unmuted. I don't no, know but if it's... Well, I think Phyllis said she couldn't uh, see you either. Can everyone see me? Can you see the kangaroo? Can you see the kangaroo that she's drawing? Okay, never mind. I don't know how to fix that. Can you see her now? No. I can see uh, her perfectly. Can you see the kangaroo? I can see Phyllis. Uh, I think it's Pam and Shelly. No, you, you need to get out of no. gallery view. There's like a bunch of squares where it says gallery view. No. And you have to get oh. out of that. Okay. I'll check. <laughs> Don't okay. worry. Let us know. Sorry about that. I wish I could help you. Okay, so I am putting in the shadows in the ears. At the same time, I'm also fixing the shape. And I can see that over here, that also went a little bit longer. So I'm going to just bring that in a little bit. And see when your lines are light, you can easily fix what's going on. Okay. Okay. And some slight shadows over here. And down here. Just putting them in lightly so we don't have an empty body. Okay, so now we have all the key areas. Uh, so one thing I want to show you is, uh, has to do with fur. Now we typically assume that when we're drawing fur that, or hair, that we are going to be drawing line by line. Actually, that is the last thing you want to do because most of the hairs that you actually do see are white. So you are working on the shadows that are around the hair. And you want to work in the direction of the hairs. You can see at the bottom that they're going this way. You can see over here up in the ears, they are going this way. The direction is extremely important when doing fur and hair because uh, you want to think of it in mass and you want to think of it as how it is laying on the head or the body of your subject, okay? So uh, we're going to start working a little bit on the eyes and what I'm going to do first is I am going to break down the shape of the eye. And if you are able to zoom in on your device to look at the eye, you will see that it is 
separated into a few parts. So we've got the heavy, dark that's around the eye. And then that shadow or that darkness kind of pulls in a little bit to the inside. And what you want to do is you want to go immediately to the other side. And that will help you measure the distance. And I'm going to put in the dark, you know, the eyelid, the eyelashes. Okay, so that's going to be the first part. I'm going to go back to the first one. And we can see the, um, the iris, the pupil, and there's a little bit of white that you are seeing over here. And it's not really white, white. It's just going to be lighter than the rest of the area. Okay. I'm going to put in the pupil. So when you're doing eyes, what's very important is to leave some white areas because those are going to be the reflections and eyes because they're, they're you know, they're, uh, the shape is a sphere. So you will have a very strong light area and it's going to vary from uh, one photo to the other because depending on where the light is hitting, but typically both eyes will be kind of getting it in the same area when the light hits, but they might get it in different degrees. If the light is closer to this eye or the head has a slight angle, then it will be getting more light, but it will get it in the same direction. So if it's getting it on the right over here, it's also going to get it on the right over here. And if you don't do that, it, it, they're not going to look connected. Okay, so I'm leaving out that white over here. I'm going to start darkening. Now, what is really cool, if you zoom in, you can see that the eyelashes are kind of reflected in the, the eye. Okay. So this is kind of where you're seeing that lighter area. Let me see if I can bring this a little bit closer. Okay, I have a new gooseneck holder that is a little bit. Oops. Okay, so that way you can see it a little bit closer. Okay, so, so what I'm doing with the eye is I am darkening gradually. The one thing you don't wanna do is darken too quickly because then you won't be able to make it darker if you need it to, okay? So ideally, I would be moving to the other eye, but I kind of wanna show you, uh, just use the time to show you really how to do that detail in the eye because that is kind of key when you're doing um, any kind of living, living thing that has eyes. Okay, so I'm going to go again. So one of the darker areas is the one that's up here. So what I'm doing is I'm actually going over the lines that I already had. And then it gets darker down here. See, I'm kind of going with more of a rounded shadow. You know, and if you focus long enough on it, you, your eye will get very accustomed to where 
the darker, lighter areas are and how they're behaving. So I'm gonna trail this out a little bit. And there's almost like, you can see these, almost like a pattern coming out from the eye. I'm going to put in those pretty eyelashes. See how gradual the darkness is happening? And see, I, I haven't even gone with the maximum dark that I can, which is great because I will really be able to have this pop. Okay. So now if I pull back, you can see how it's starting to get that very three-dimensional quality in the eye. And we are getting, you know, the light spots. So this would need a little bit more work, but we're gonna move on to some other areas. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to show you how to work a little bit of the fur. And we can see that we've got three different things going on. The, the fur on the face is a little bit shorter. It looks like it's kind of stubbier. Uh, up on the ears, there's a little bit more softness. And uh, on the body, it kind of looks scruffy. And then you have a little bit more kind of like pillowy around the eyes. Okay, so if you are just going to look at the patches of fur, Okay, you can see that on the forehead, it's almost like speckled. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put in just the dark areas that I'm seeing and the medium dark areas, the middle tones. So what I'm doing, and it's almost like I'm just putting in what I'm seeing. I am barely looking at my drawing and I'm just putting in, it's almost like I'm just doing like this maze. So what this is doing, it's actually giving me texture. It's giving me light and dark. See, I'm just kind of wiggling my pencil around. And then when I get over here, we're getting a slightly fluffier texture. So the dark areas, are a little bit more uh, longer. And then as we move towards the center of the, the forehead, the areas are getting darker. So I'm gonna make my squiggle lines a little bit darker. They fill in a little bit more. Okay, so this is giving me a really good ground to work with. So over here, I am seeing the dark areas. So what I want you to keep in mind is that you know, we are definitely not going to finish a portrait in an hour. So this is really more a demonstration of how you work on portraits in general, uh, animals specifically, and particularly our kangaroo today, and how to, you know, just an introduction into how to do things like fur and reflections in the eyes. But we are by no means gonna, gonna be finishing this. So this is gonna be up to you if you decide to you know, take it further and, and practice with it. Okay, so let's go up here to where we have um, the, the kind of slightly more 
billowy hairs. Okay. All right. So we have white hair laying over a dark area, and that's why we're able to see it. So I'm putting in the dark areas that are framing the white fur. And again, this is working on the negative space, which is a space around something. And in the dark area, we're not seeing a lot of detail in the texture because it doesn't have any light on it. And then when it's going to this side, we're getting more of kind of the rougher texture. And one thing that um, we're not seeing on this photo reference because I think they completely cut this out and put it on a white, um, a white background is that there would be a lot of flyaways when you're drawing animals, but I think these were clipped out. And the flyaways will always be dark. So when you're doing hairs inside or on, on the animal, they will be white and the shadows around them will make them show. But when they're, they are outside the animal, they will be dark because there's light behind them. And flyaways is one really nice thing to, to, to kind of add when you're drawing an animal. It just gives it movement, makes it look more uh, realistic. Okay, so we're gonna put in a little bit of this. So we've got the darker area over here that I'm just gonna mark out and I'm just gonna give it a soft shading. Again, I'm gonna put some flyaways and the flyaways would, would depend on the length of you know, the dog's hair, but the dog, the animal's hair, I do a lot of dog portraits, um, and the texture of their hair. Okay, so it starts kind of opening up a little bit here. Okay, so you can see that the light area over here is strongest uh, towards the head and it gets a little bit uh, more of a, of a middle tone over here. And that has to do with that over here, you have a lot more hair that is clustered. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put in those teeny little shaded areas that I'm seeing. I'm going to start with that. And when you do this step, they don't have to be exact, but putting them in the right place or close to the right place will, will give a lot of detail. You would be surprised how much detail that can give. See, I have not put in a single hair. I am just working on the shadows or the darker areas or darker hairs that are making them show. And you have to keep in mind that it does take time to build an area. So right now it looks, looks a little bit patchy, but the more you add, the more it's going to it's going to come together, okay? Um, animals are are not are not easy, but they are fantastic practice. So over here, it's getting a little bit darker.
and you know it's important to work from dark to light light to dark up and down You see it's starting to get a little bit more definition. I find it very helpful to squint my eyes if I'm having a hard time seeing detail and then you will actually only see what counts the most. Because if you attempt to put detail that you can't see, it's gonna look off. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can kind of see what, how that looks in context with the rest of the kangaroo. So it's starting to come together. Uh, let's work a little bit on his nose. And actually, be before we do that, I'm, I'm going to work a little bit on these, these, um, the fur under here because it's going in a different direction and you know I can just show you different treatments that you can do with different um, different fur okay so on this one you can see uh, it's a little bit more clear it has a more specific direction so what I'm going to do is I am going to start with some very lightly shaded area. So you will get much stronger results if you're working on hair or fur if you go with the direction rather than up and down. So if you are able to just, you know, kind of do the direction, we're just doing a mess. We're not doing, we're kind of just placing some color for the whole area. Because what happens when you go back and forth is you might get too sharp of an, an edge somewhere where you don't want it. But this way, you're actually controlling it a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to go in and fill in my darker areas. And you're going to see they're taking... So each area is going to take... The shadows are going to take different shapes depending on what they are shaping. So in this part, because it's kind of longer hair, we're seeing some longer patches of dark areas and they are kind of wider at the bottom as they go in, they kind of taper. And over here, you can see the direction is starting to just curve a little bit because it's following the shape of the neck. You know, the, the direction of your lines is, is key. It's very important. It will help give three-dimensional quality to your work. And again, over here, they're also doing that. They're kind of curving to take the shape of the neck. Okay, so that's kind of how you work that area. He starts getting a little scruffier as we move down. And unless you see an area that has a lot of white in it, you can go ahead and just give it a slightly shaded you know, coat, just to give you something to work with. Because we're not really seeing any white in this area, it's just some light. 
light patches. So my shadows or my dark areas here are looking a little bit more circular. Not circular, but more rounded. They were more elongated over here in that part. Okay, so again, you know, when you're looking at this in isolation, it, it doesn't look like much, but everything that you're doing is helping to build the guy. So here in, in this area, it's almost almost like a speckled kind of effect that we are getting. And we will get to that in a little bit after we do a little bit of the nose. So notice that it starts light and it kind of gets darker towards the bottom. It gets really dark in the nostril area and where it kind of starts forming um, that space between the two um, I don't know what these areas are called, I forgot. So, so we're gonna go from light up here. So as you go, because we already have a little bit of mass, as you go, you can start darkening wherever you're seeing the area get darker. I'm just doing circular strokes because this is a smoother area so things like the eyes and the nose you really want to go with a circular shading motion and that will help the smoothness of those two areas will help show kind of the texture of the hair because you will have a contrast between textures okay so here it's going darker There's some shadows right up here. Um, also, you can see that the shape is almost like, it's almost like a square. got kind of a deep shaded area over here. That's gonna help bring it forward. Okay, so I'm gonna do some of the shadows around it over here. And again, for example, right here, it's kind of a medium texture, so I'm going kind of with an elongated kind of round shading motion. Now this is an area that does have whites, so make sure that you leave them out. If you don't, you can just pick up an eraser and do that. So what I'm doing right now also is I'm, I'm fixing the shape of the face. So I'm gonna just see how far this needs to go. Okay, so this is all extra. I do not need that. So again, I'm just lightly shading this in and that would be in preparation for um, doing the texture of the hair. Okay. So um, I'm gonna work a little bit on the texture here. So you can see on the bridge of the nose, 
the hairs are very, very short. So we're really not seeing any individual hairs. So it's more of, I think uh, we would do it as a shaded treatment and maybe just have just a few of them be pronounced. And again, whenever you're working on an area, make sure that you start beyond the area. So I'm gonna start that area by working closer to the eye. working a little bit around it. And what that does is that, that kind of eases you into the area. So, you know, you're working on the space that's around it. So it's helping to frame it. It's also helping keeping, you know, to keep the areas connected. It just, it's a lot more cohesive that way. I'm gonna go a little bit on this side as well. And I'm gonna ease into here. Okay, so I'm gonna give this kind of a light area because it is one of the lighter areas because this area is, is pronounced. So it, it comes out, if you're looking at a kangaroo from the side, you would see that this area kind of is a protrusion, so. So as it goes up here, I'm starting to see a little bit more of the texture. So I'm actually kind of just shaping my shading in that direction. So. I'm just doing a slightly more elongated line with my shading. And I'm gonna start putting in some of the texture that I'm seeing. Again, to create the texture, look at the shaded areas and just barely look at your paper and just let your eye kind of follow what it's seeing. So the higher up, these areas are becoming a little bit more pronounced. But they are not as pronounced as they are up here. So I'm gonna keep them a little bit closer together, a little bit smaller. And even some of them, you know, just like little dots, like we talked before, like almost like, like a speckled effect. Okay, I'm gonna uh, zoom this in a little bit. Okay, again, make sure that you do have a sharp edge. Again, they gather closer together towards the eye. And see, I'm almost making like these just little kind of irregular triangles. Just try to look at the shape that you're seeing and try your best to adopt that as the shape you're gonna use in a specific area. They become more elongated here. And then this area is getting a little bit darker. A little bit almost, you can see kind of the direction of the hairs. You know, if something catches your eye, just work on it if you're in that area. And I'm gonna go a little bit darker in the eye in some of the key areas.
move a little bit up here. I'm gonna try to wrap this up because we have about seven minutes and I know that there's probably a lot of questions about this, but before you, you know, of course you can ask any question that you want, but realize that I am telling you that this is not easy. It, 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 is, it takes a lot of practice. What I'm doing and showing you in an hour is something that took me, you know, many years to learn. So, you know, be easy on yourself. Don't, <laughs> don't, get, don't be too hard on yourself. So you can see that, you know, it's starting to get the detail. So that is the, the same technique that I, I used when I did this, uh, the one that is a little bit more finished. So you can see, for example, in um, the eyes, the, the finished one, you know, you can, you can see how more pronounced it is. You can see kind of some of the details starting to come. So um, yeah, this, this would need quite, quite some time to, to work on. And uh, I'm going to go and uh, answer your questions. And uh, let's see what you have, or you can show it to me if you want. Okay. Oh, it looks great, Melissa. Awesome. Oh, well, Lucia, that is incredible. Pam, that looks really good. Okay, I am. Oh, Christy, that. Oh my God. That looks amazing. Sharon, are you going to show me? <laughs> Can you guys un unmute yourself or are you going to? That looks really good. The eyes are fantastic, Sharon. Beautiful. Susanna? Noel, can we really see nice. this one also? Mm -hmm. one that's can we see that again next to this? Can we what? Can you put the one that's more finished next to this one as well? So we can see that? Do you know what I'm saying? No, no. Can you hold up <laughs> the one that you did first next to this one? Yeah, well, well I don't know. Okay. So here's the one that I did first. Oh. And this was today's it's i'm working off two cameras so it's kind of hard to yeah. accept this is going to be easier okay yeah and honestly like on on this one even though he's not finished i feel that certain things turned out better uh you know again because uh, uh because um is there something i was supposed to do melissa no. Um, because, you know, the more you work on it, you know, the more you visit it, the, um, you know, the easier it's going to be to see what needs work. Um, let's see who else. Carol, are you going to show me? That's totally your area. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Linda, did, did you, did you do it? Yeah, you can. Oh, that looks great. I'll lift it up over your face. Looks great. Andre, you going to show me? Yeah, I thought they did already. Time needs a lot of work. Oh, this looks great. Honestly. Thank you. Evie, are you going to show me? Okay, I am, I am seriously... Uh, Phyllis, is that, that, did you start a new one or is that the one you showed me yesterday? No, it's not the I, one. I, it's the one I showed you yesterday, but I edited some of the hairs that with the technique that you showed. I, I love it. I love it. And, and I think this one was a, was a good kind of animal to start with because he is a little bit scruffy. Uh, when you're doing, a, you know, let's say something like a Yorkie that has that very silky hair, that becomes a lot more of a challenge and is a little bit more time consuming. But honestly, I am blown away uh, by these. You know, this, like I, I, start, I told you, it's not easy. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of established, accomplished artists absolutely, 
you know, avoid drawing animals because they're they are not easy. So this is fantastic. Honestly, this has been my favorite outcome of all the classes that we've done online. I think this is this is amazing. I, I really hope that you've learned you know some things that can help you and you know look up animal pictures and you know draw things that you love that's a great place to start if you're still not sure then when you get really good at something then you want to start things that you don't like that much but to get yourself kind of you know started and comfortable you know just draw your favorite animal uh again avoid an for for you know just for um as a start, you know, don't go draw your cat or your dog unless you've done it several times before. But, you know, things like, you know, elephants are really fun. There's a lot of really nice texture in the trunk. And I'm probably going to introduce an elephant uh, to draw in the future because I found some really, really cool pictures. Uh, you know, things like armadillos. Just something that's a little bit, that has a very specific look to it to where you can get a resemblance quite quickly because sometimes we just need something that will give us you know confidence it's like oh okay well it's looking like you know uh a buffalo or you know wh whatever whatever it is uh does anyone have any questions about any of the techniques or I any i have a comment and i think that the way you taught us how to do the little hairs to make white spaces look i mean i took a picture Mine and I can see it better even than looking at the drawing. Yeah. And how you created the way the hair looks uh -huh. by negative space and adding it was it was a really helpful technique. Good. I'm I'm really glad that 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 translated over because you know what I mean. Even if I'm doing a quick drawing, the first thing we do is like hair. Oh yeah, I have a thin pencil. I can just do hairs. The last thing you want to do is put in the hairs because the hairs you're actually seeing are white unless they're flyaways and you've got the light behind them. So yeah, work on the negative spaces. So uh, even if you're working on, you know, like, like human hair, long hair, you know, look at the patches that are, that are creating, you know, the waves and everything else is going, to, but it's, it's a matter of building it gradually. It really, it really is. Anyone else have any question or any comments? Well, I was surprised that you were using the circular motions rather that than I was just using what? Sorry, the circular hatching uh -huh. rather than just straight lines everywhere. With I, I was surprised at that, yeah. but I see yeah, it now. That's, yeah, th that's that's a good point. So, Sharon, if if I were uh, drawing an animal that has uh, like longer hair or hair that that lies down I would be doing more of that kind of you know just uh, top to bottom top to bottom and I did do it in a little bit in his neck but the rest of it because we're not we're not really seeing those lines it's kind of more of a scruffy fuzzy texture so when we do and if you're doing something you know like like a like a horse tail or something yes you would be doing or dogs I have uh, long-haired dogs you will see more of that but you know the thing is and, and just make sure you apply this to anything that you do is follow the shape you know just follow the shape we know it's hair but if it doesn't look and if i'm not seeing those lines then you don't want to put them in um okay. any any other questions or comments before we go um i just wanted to tell you uh justin sent out a list that i put together uh for art supplies uh, these are so so this website that I buy from it's called Dick Blick and it's like this giant place that has everything you can imagine they have great prices every every anything that you look at you know there's student grade there's professional grade it, you know you want to spend a dollar or a thousand you will find it but spending a lot of money doesn't always necessarily mean that you're gonna get something good I try to put the what the things that I've used tried and true and that I like uh, but they also, they have a lot of, you know, discounts, coupon codes that they get. See, Sharon, you've got your, your ink pens that great. Uh, so, you know, I mean, if you want to build your, your collection and things like good watercolors will last you a long time. I mean, it's totally worth it. You might want to not want to do the hundred dollar ones, but you know, if you're going to work with them a lot, it, it's worth it because 
the scholastic ones we use in class, they, they run down pretty quickly and you'll be out of. Uh, Noel, Noel? Yes. Well, you said something about markers for next week. Yeah, that's why I'm showing this. You yeah. wanted to have this next week. Yes. Right? yes. Markers? Yeah, just like a Sharpie or something. Uh, and you don't really have to have it for next week because in order to use it, the painting has to be dry, but I am gonna show you how to use it on watercolor. So I will uh, send out another email with some suggestions. Um, and if you did not get the, the list, if you have any questions, make sure that you contact me. I think we need to let us. Yeah. Noel, are we talking about black marker? Black. Right? Or oh. Yeah. So I can show you what, you know, I have over here. I mean, I just use, where am I? Okay. I mean, just like, just the Sharpie you can pick up from Walgreens or anywhere. I mean, this is fine. Just make sure it has kind of a finer tip. Uh, and I find these to be the most economical. Honestly, I've, I've, I try all different types, but uh, I think this is fine. Um, there's, uh, uh, you know, if you go into an art supply store, there's, you know, drafting pens and something. Just make sure that it's not too, too thin to where the point that you can't, uh, that it will scratch the paper. So, I don't know. Does the point, the does the point have a uh, size? Does Sorry? The point have, does the point have a size to it? Well, extra fine. I mean, I'm looking at this. It says extra fine. And um, yeah, if you just, I mean, this is classic. This comes in one size, so it doesn't, you know. Okay. Who's kidding? Your, your baby wants to be in the class, Noel. No, that's not, that's not mine. I'm going to say goodbye to you guys. You were wonderful. By the way, you <laughs> You're yeah, somebody has a cat. It's it's right in uh, California here. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Oh, my good class. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very right, much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See ya. Email me. Bye. Okay. Thank you.